code signal, arcade, spiral numbers. Hello everyone, my name is Joshua and I'll be solving spiral numbers. So we'll construct a square matrix with a size of n by n and constructing integers from 1 to n by n in a spiral order, starting from top left in a clockwise direction. So if you see here, if it's a 3 by 3, we increment each value in the index in the spiral direction by 1, starting with 1, until we reach the center. Um, now, here are constraints. It's going to be definitely a square, and also it's going to have a 3. So we don't have to worry about the edge case, where if it's just going to be 1 or 2, um, we could just assume that it's going to be big enough that we could actually commit to that spiral. So in that case, I guess what we first have to do is to define the matrix of the spiral itself, u int, and it's going to be the size of n by n, and now we want to divide that define the the first value that it's going to be. I'm going to call it a walk because basically we're taking it step by step. So I'm going to start initializing it with a value of 1. This is basically a boundary question. You have to know your boundaries. And by that, uh, oh yeah, by the way, return to spiral. Sorry. It's going to be a boundary question where we have to walk through it and we have to make sure that it detects a boundary and starts go walking to um, along this side of the matrix index takes a boundary and it walks in this direction and as we walk through each part of the matrix we have to um, since we walk through this we have to update those boundary conditions um, for example when we start in this aspect right here we don't want to walk as soon as we complete one whole spiral we don't want to go back to the beginning where we started instead we want to go back to another layer inside that matrix so um, here, hold for a second. I'm going to define those boundaries. R is 0, which is row not equals to 0. So this is going to be starting from the top, int row length. So it's going to stop until the end of the matrix. And that's going to be n. You know what that's going to be. And it'll be int c0 is equal to 0. And int cl is equal to n as well. There you go. So I mean, the boundary conditions are given by the square, which is pretty awesome. Now, when we go through this, we're going to keep it spiraling until these boundary conditions um, overlap each other inside this, this um, matrix. Think of it as like enclosing walls slowly going to the center, and eventually if they overlap, that's when the end condition ends. So in this case, it's going to be when R0 is greater than RL, and C0 is greater than... Oh no, wait. we continue going on when R0 is less than RL, less than or equal to. And we'll continue going on when C0 is e less than or equal to CL. Uh, let's see about this. Hmm, let me think about this. And now we do, there'll be four, two, four four loop conditions we have to consider because they're going in different directions from left to right, up to down, right to left, and down to up. So in that case, we have to, for int, since we go first left to right, we do i is equal to whatever the first boundary condition is right here. We start at, okay, hold for a second. I have to re evaluate. I think before they start, I think this is when the condition ends, because c0 has to be always less than cl, and c0 it has to be less than cl, or else it'll start executing within that same boundary to prevent that issue from happening. I have to define it like this. Now for int i is equal to zero, I would say i should equal to, let's just define the behavior right here. This is going to be used for, this is going to be used for going from up to down. This is going to be used for going left to right. This again is going to be used for up or down condition and this is going to be for the left or right condition. Now with that in mind, now we start again. So if it goes in the i direction from left to right, this is going from left to right. Then we have to define it as i is equal to uh, i is equal to r zero. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hold for a second. I need to make sure I have this evaluate evaluated correctly. Oh, I kind of switched this stuff around. I was kind of getting a little overexcited. There we go. This is what it should be. So if it's going from left to right, I start with Z, C0. And then I is less than uh, CL, because it goes from this direction to that direction. I++. 
and then we return uh, yeah and then we update the spiral value with oh and then we also make sure that since it's starting with this certain value right here it's gonna be um, R0 C not right here. Oh no, not C not. Sorry, I. So now it's going to iterate through this row where R not is because we're starting with that boundary right here, and I is going to be equal to walk. And then every time we go through the for loop, we walk plus plus. And now we now we're done with the R not. We update that condition, the end condition plus plus because we're enclosing it going up to down. Now we repeat this steps every time we complete going through one part of each boundary of the matrix. We update the end boundaries so that it ensures that they won't go over the same path over and over again and reach the end condition where it's done um, going through this whole while loop. There you go. I'm going to return to spiral. Um, I'm going to go and cut ahead to what is expected values. I already created a solution, but I just want to make sure it's fast enough so you guys can save time. All right, guys, sorry I'm back. So I kind of you know, change the value so it makes it much more easier to understand. Um, X is equal to C naught, X is less than C naught. So again, this is going from left to right. And I'm updating the spiral with the walk values from left to right here. And then every time it makes a step, I update that step. I update the end condition. And then this one's going from up to down. You can see it as denoted by Y, the Y direction. R naught, row naught, it's going less than to row RL, this end condition right here. Y plus plus again the end condition y walk plus plus and now since we already walked through this whole end boundary for CL now we update it to enclose from right to left so it's all enclosing to the center this is basically what this code does so um, and then after that once it's reached that condition where R naught is equal to or greater than RL same thing with the C naught then we have the full spiral fully updated and we return it. And when we do it, it should pass. Great. Sweet. Okay. Well, guys, I am I uh, hope you like this content. Um, I just saved you time. Just I wrote this code out. You can feel free to pause anytime in my video. I'm going to slowly scroll through it. If you want to copy it or learn from it, preferably learn from it, but you know, if you have those code assignments, I would kind of copy it. Yeah, and um, if you like and subscribe, I want to send you to a black hole. So it's like a field trip, guys, to understand how a spiral looks like. Um, I'm gonna, you're going to go to the center of the Milky Way. I heard the Milky Way is the largest black hole, and it is, a, <laughs> it is basically a galaxy. I suppose our segment of the universe. So, uh, yeah, like and subscribe and you get to see it. A field trip with the Magic School Bus. Just kidding, guys. Take care.